So who is Ted? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're the 90s generation, the dot-com kids. It's remarkable that we're the first set of people to have grown up with personal computing. I grew up in a small industrial town called Jamshedpur in India, and it was, and it was in 1996 that my father won a slogan writing competition that brought us our first PC. No one else I knew had one, and it was amazing. For the first time, I could look up anything I wanted, and it didn't matter anymore that the only li real library I had access to only had an ancestral encyc encyclopedia and some old copies of Goosebumps. <laughs> and each year, we saw computers get smaller and faster, and technology pervaded every part of our lives. It allows us to do so much more. It's transformed the very medium in which we organize and communicate in our societies. Voices previously suppressed now echo online. And we've rewarded those pushing it forward with dizzying and previously unseen amounts of money. But let's problematize this progress. Is something going structurally wrong with the way we incentivize and value our tech culture? When Instagram sold for a billion dollars, it had 13 employees and no profit model. Back in 1983, when Polaroid made a billion dollars in sales, it gave employment to 13,000 people all over the world. It seems almost as though in 1983, a billion was backed by so much more, at least more than the mere potential to capture eyeballs and generate ad revenue. You know something is going hilariously off when an amused developer makes something really simple like Flappy Bird that then makes $50,000 a day. <laughs> or when the people at Elysium Space really start pushing on the app economy mindset to send your loved one's ashes into space and lets you track them on your Android device. Recent trends re repeatedly remind us just how much we've dehumanized the way we measure value. You could put we live in a world where you could put together an advanced space telescope, vaccines for all kids, 50 of the most expensive paintings ever sold, and that would amount, in dollar terms, only to a mobile messaging app. And what does this money even represent? It seems as though we're betting less on science, on health, education, or even art to further human goals as we are on mobile apps. And of course, while we talk in billions of dollars, the person who actually assembled your iPhone would rather jump off the fourth floor of her factory in China. That is an incomprehensible level of inequality. So even though it seems as though technology has connected us all, the fact is that it's included some and excluded most others. And it's too easy to forget that we are the small minority. We are the only one third of the whole world that is even plugged in to the greatest revolutions of our time. Google recently commissioned a study. It's called The Impact of the Internet in Africa. And what it found was that the internet is a tremendous undisputed force for economic growth and social change. It's most needed exactly where it's lacking in the schools and clinics and the farms and governments on the continent. And yet, as a society, we're betting more on something that makes photos on your phone disappear after a few seconds. So we have two ideas. One is that there are perhaps some structural problems with the way we value our most precious assets, especially in the tech world. And second is that perhaps the real value of these tools, their transformative power, lies in applying them in places that are not online, in places off grid. But how do you export technology? How do you embed a technological revolution where it's most needed and do this in a way that's appropriate and effective? Because it's much harder than simply dropping away free laptops. Technology doesn't seem to work in isolation. We need to build an inclusive network, something that puts everyone on this economic wave, something that makes everyone a part of our industrial revolution. 
we were given the web, a promise of interconnectedness across the planet, of immediate access to the sum of human knowledge, are we squandering its potential? At an early stage startup I've been working on called Trebos, we've been imagining what the inclusive network would actually look like. And perhaps some of the questions, uh, the answers to some of the questions I've raised today comes from something we built to, to reinvigorate small farms in Brazil. Our premise was that Brazil, like most developing countries, has serious problems in agriculture. Farmers get caught in a cycle of poverty as they lack access to capital, and then lack someone that they can sell to who will give them more than 10% of the final market price of their produce. They lack an incentive to take risk and innovate and remain producing at really small uh, levels of production. So how can we use really simple technology to fix big problems in agriculture? Trebos directly connects subsistence farmers with urban markets. We build online communities that invest in these small farms and allows these farmers to increase their incomes by selling uh, at fair prices. Have you ever played the game Farmville? It's a, it's a really popular Facebook game that allows you to plant virtual trees and build virtual farms. Trebos allows you to do the same thing, but in the real world. So when communities of people get together in Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo and build these online farms, these trees actually get realized. The monthly payments made online get aggregated into a new source of crowdfunded capital that allows these farmers to rebuild their agribusinesses. And now these farmers, trained in organic and sustainable ways, get fair price for their produce, which they sell back to the communities that supported them. But the point here is not about agriculture. It's about how you give someone living completely off grid the opportunity to ride an economic wave, to gain from the connectivity of social networks and modern invention. It's remarkable that the same technology or the same sophistication of technology that allows you to take selfies can even help someone lift themselves out of poverty. So what I want to say to bright young minds is this. Much of the world is still dark and doesn't make it to your newsfeed. Apply your talent where it really matters. And as a society, let's bet more on people than technology alone. Let's finance ventures that don't just make an app, but solve a human problem. As we, the 90s generation, graduate, what will be our visions of success? What will we choose to value in the world? Will inequality continue to be our century's refrain? Or will we use the tools at hand to build an inclusive network? Our generation didn't make the web, but we could be the first to make it truly worldwide. Thank you.